In this chapter, it seemed as though the stone was speaking for itself. However, it was Anton, Ellen's father, who communicated through the statue of the farmer. The rabbits were startled when they saw the dragon, which clarified that the statue had been imbued with ancient golem magic and was originally created to be activated at a specific moment. Ellen faced a dilemma, yet the reason remained unknown. The portal for teleportation was not open to any of them, preventing their entry into the Black Tower or the exercise of their powers any longer. S.E. June immediately informed the dragon that this situation arose because the dragon had not engaged with the channel and he had not left a like on the video for it to be viewed. He promptly did so along with everyone else. Fortunately, Ellen's father had the permission to utilize the statue, and when it was transported to the 99th floor and activated, it was able to detect a faint signal from outside the tower and control the father's statue. I was relieved that our son had rescued their beloved Ellen from the dragon. The dragon's heart began to race as it bowed its head before S.E. June, repeatedly expressing gratitude, while the boy felt genuinely anxious as he relayed to me that the father had done everything within his power to save the tower's director. However, the main point had now arrived. The dragon inquired of June whether he had noticed that the Black Tower was not being managed effectively. The dragon, in reality, seemed to require a bit of assistance from the future farm tower until Lessie. June expressed his surprise and wondered whether the dragon would need anything from a mere human. However, surprises were still on the horizon. The father requested Essie June to serve as the acting manager of the Black Tower at Eileen's residence. But S.E. June doubted his ability to fulfill this role, as he was merely a farm tower operator without combat or management skills. Furthermore, he was unable to leave the 99th floor. It is worth noting that he was not even capable of handling the corrupt entities and branches that were encroaching upon the 99th floor and contaminating the farm. Meanwhile, the scene shifted, revealing a giant entity with small scouts still advancing towards S.E. June and his army. The Black Rabbit also warned S.E. June of their approach, yet the dragon remained as calm as possible. The farm tower operator, fully capable of addressing this straightforward issue, reassured his son not to worry at all, as the dragon's father would assist the farm tower in accomplishing the seemingly impossible task. As soon as he said this, the statue was immediately activated, flapping its wings, but suddenly became aggressive and let out a tremendous roar. It became clear that the statue was being controlled by someone entirely different. Eileen's grandfather, known as the Emperor, was not truly happy with the bow, as he felt that his vision was clouded by the bow's presence. He was unable to see the value of his granddaughter, who was attempting to alleviate his fears. He felt an overwhelming urge to crush the small human, believing that none of the events unfolding would have occurred had it not been for S.E. June, however. Even when the tower farmer was anxious, he promptly introduced himself as Park Jun, the man from the 99th floor of the tower. He certainly possessed the courage to speak when others could not. He immediately apologized to Old for the disturbance he had caused to the dragons, and even the grandfather was impressed by this consideration. It was evident that Jun had good manners and understood the importance of respecting elders. The grandfather quickly calmed down again ready to take flight, as he requested S.E. June to leave the details for later, since he had some matters to attend to first. All the while, the corrupt entities causing continuous harm to the 99th floor due to the dragons began to take flight. A powerful wind storm struck San, with rabbits attempting to hide in the tower's clothing. The statue of the flying dragon began to ascend into the sky like a blue moon. It shone brightly, even illuminating the corrupt entities that were unable to comprehend the unfolding events. The dragon gazed at them with a look of disdain as it prepared for annihilation. Each of the entities felt the immediate surge of the dragon's power, which manifested as a blue energy sphere behaving like fire. This energy scorched the corrupt beings, incinerating them in a brilliant explosion that left no ash on the ground. The brilliance was so intense that the entire 99th floor radiated with blue light. Even as Eileen dreamt of mischievous deeds, she was completely unaware of her actions regarding our child, S.E. June. Meanwhile, the grandfather was digging a massive hole where the dragon had obliterated the corrupt entities. The bear and the mother managed to shield our child from the ensuing consequences. John could hardly believe the spectacle. The mountain had been blown away by the same black dragon soaring through the sky, calling upon the farmer in the tower to direct him to the location of the corrupt entities. This was so he could locate the items that would aid him in his battle. A group of creatures stated that June had arrived. I felt a slight curiosity and wondered what was occurring. 
The item proved to be useful, and the entire group began to head towards the battlefield, which had now taken the form of a pit. As they started to slide down, they sensed that the heat from the explosion had not yet dissipated. They had completely departed, so they needed to wait for the heat to properly subside. However, a small bear immediately spotted something shining in the distance and informed his father. It appeared to be some sort of seed. Se Jun approached the item to examine it, pondering whether this was the object the emperor had mentioned in the notification. A window appeared when Se Jun obtained an enhanced seed for the corrupted entity, an item created by absorbing the energy of the blue moon. The seeds had been empowered by this energy, and with each consumption of the item, all statistics would permanently increase by 10. If this item were left on the ground, the seeds would begin to sprout and grow into powerful corrupted beings. The emperor immediately commanded the entities to consume the seed. As humans were weak, the body needed to become stronger, even if it was just a slight enhancement. The dragon reported that if Se Jun left the sea as it was, it would grow into a strong corrupted entity once more, so it should be consumed before that happened. Even though Se Jun found it difficult to digest something that originated from a monster, he realized that he had been cooking piranha fish and giant crabs from the very beginning. Yet it remained difficult for him to digest this fact. Even the dragon was curious about what he was doing. But somehow, Saijin dared to ask the elder if he should challenge the great dragon's order and consume the seeds after cooking them. However, he was immediately taken aback upon hearing that the emperor was indeed shocked at the thought of this man. It was intriguing to inquire about who would undertake such a task. Jun proudly informed the dragon that he himself would be the one to do it. The dragon then wondered if the tower farmer could truly cook, prompting Se Jun to ask if he had anything to offer the great dragon for tasting. Unfortunately, Se Jun declined, citing his grandfather, who had never cooked before, coming to the farm. Nevertheless, he still had some cherry tomatoes, the very ingredient that Eileen adored so much. Consequently, the elder promptly requested Se Jun to give him some, as he needed to ascertain whether it was truly safe or dangerous for his granddaughter. Meanwhile, Se Jun pondered how he should present the tomatoes to the dragon, who had also given him the statue and left it there. The statue began to behave as if it were consuming something. The dragon clarified that within its mouth, there was a teleportation device capable of easily transferring objects. If the statue were to swallow anything, it would be transported to a designated location. The control device was responsible for altering the scene. Observe the cherry tomatoes now. They were sent to the emperor, who was seated on an opulent chair, overseeing the dragon statue, captivated by its appearance. The item in question was intended to treat an ailment that his granddaughter was currently facing. Meanwhile, Anton was reviewing related files to examine June and all her activities. He had done this on the 99th floor, but he was genuinely shocked when he discovered that the red locust sat Attacked during their absence, he looked at various images depicting Se, Jun and the monsters on the 99th floor consuming the red locusts. He pondered when the incident had occurred, although it had taken place. Anton was truly impressed to see that some humans were effortlessly consuming the formidable creatures. Defeated by the red locusts, the dragons had been vanquished, alleviating concerns about the monsters residing in the tower and the potential for famine. Otherwise, he was engrossed in reading everything about Se Jun, examining the file that detailed multiple edible items with diverse effects, all made possible through agriculture, thanks to the crops cultivated by Eileen. Eileen's condition has also improved. The father felt somewhat embarrassed about his actions. I know nothing about the tower farm even, after a long time managing it. This tower farmer was also assisting his daughter in treating her illness. He decided that he would learn more about this human tower farmer. But then the grandfather came running after him, shouting his name. Even Anton was a bit shocked by what had happened to his father, who was running like a madman without knowing where he was going. However, the grandfather was genuinely pleased with the display of red cherry tomatoes, telling Anton to take a look at this item. Yet, Anton could not understand why his father had brought cherries. The tomatoes from the farm at the dragon statue made the grandfather smile and act as if it were the best day of his life, as he told Anton. The cherries were indeed delicious, but the son was unable to comprehend anything. The scene shifted, and we reached the 99th floor, where Se Jun was calling out several times, unable to receive any response from the statue, which was completely unresponsive. He wondered if the grandfather did not like the cherry tomatoes, especially after receiving them. The statue ceased its movement entirely, 
but resolved to approach them at home. As it was utterly fatigued, it informed all the creatures that they too should begin to move. However, despite several calls to the little bear, he remained unresponsive. The warrior rabbit reported to the tower farmer that the bear had become quite obstinate. Nevertheless, the creature turned around, pleased to see his father, and inquired whether he should possess the item he had discovered. Everyone was astonished when they beheld a substantial piece of wood, over a century old, which was many times larger than the little bear himself. As the tower farmer began to examine it, a notification appeared, indicating that this was the enhanced branch of the corrupted entity. The bear gently told the tower farmer that he too wished to have a weapon like the warrior rabbit, and this piece of wood appeared to be a very sturdy club. However, Shun immediately disagreed, informing the little bear that this item was far too large to be carried back to their home. The gentle creature's heart broke upon hearing those words, even leading him to offer his father the wooden club. However, he was unable to keep it, and it was truly unfortunate that the little bear was astonished immediately when he said something. As the tower was being constructed, the farmer was comforting the sweet little child, a creature asking him to return home. The little bear began to cheerfully shout. S.E. Jun turned around and saw that such a small and gentle dare was easily capable of lifting such a heavy club at times, even causing S.E. to forget how strong the bear cub actually was. He immediately started to tell him not to hold on to the club because it was too large. But suddenly a miracle occurred, and the club began to shrink just like the little bear. Both he and the entire wooden club had now transformed into a cute little stick, which was now easy for the little bear to carry. Even though Asi Jun was completely confused, he was unable to disagree with the little bear while inspecting the stick and realized that its size could be adjusted at will by adding or extracting mana. Both the warrior rabbit and S.E. Jun were truly shocked when they realized that the little bear had, indeed, acquired a very powerful weapon. Another bold entrance was formed as the farmer of the tower wrote that on that day, the little bear had gained a new friend in the form of a weapon, and we see him dancing delightfully on the ground with the help of his new stick.